Yeah, good, good question. So the, who's the therapist? Is it the individual therapist? or uh, On our clinic, um, we do both. Um, we start by asking the, the parent and the child what they would like. Uh, you can imagine that the advantage of having it be the same therapist is the same therapist has rapport with the suicidal teen and can actually push the suicidal teen a lot more because they have rapport. Uh, but you could also, that's a big advantage. But of course, there's the disadvantage that the other person, that parent, might feel disincluded. Like, gee, that's really your therapist and it's not really my therapist. And so we, we leave it up to them. Um, we're willing to do it either way. And the data tell us that it doesn't matter, actually, that both can work well. Sometimes we have two therapists. That's extremely, in our system, it's extremely inefficient. You know, we don't get paid for any of this. Family therapy doesn't. We don't get reimbursed. We, I run a free clinic, actually. So uh, it's just, it's, it's very hard to do. But even in non-free clinics, you don't, you don't get much money for doing family interventions. And you, you certainly can't get, you get half as much if you have two therapists. So um, it's not very, it's, it's not a realistic option most of the time. But we do do it sometimes. But um, we don't do it often. Okay, just a couple of other things. I know it's late. Every, you got it. You got the energy for ten more minutes. All right, excellent. Okay, so um, this is just a slide I included. You know, we actually have a whole small what we call a coding system where we actually record when any family comes into our clinic after we decide we're going to treat them. We put them in the room and we turn the video camera on and we have them talk about how things are going in their relationship. And then we as a team watch that video together to try to identify the invalidating parts. And we try to identify the inaccurate expression. It's harder before you know people to identify inaccurate expression, but it's, it's easier to find in, invalidating responses. And so this is just a, what we're looking for. We have, this is a summary of our coding system, what we look for that's validating or it's, it's converse what's invalidating. And it's kind of fun. If anybody's interested, I could send you the little write-up about learning how to identify those things in a, in a conversation. Um, okay, so we're trying to do accurate expression and validation. So in order to let somebody express accurately, we've got to reduce the other person's invalidating responses. Okay? And that requires what we were talking about, self-management of arousal, emotion management, awareness of emotion, and then bringing the attention to the other person. Like what is it that you're experiencing? What is it you're wanting, thinking, feeling? Having enough emotion management of myself to have a big chunk of my attention to put on you, okay? And that's not easy. And sometimes we can manage to help, you know, some parents and some partners can do this in one session. And others, it's many, many, many sessions. It's hard to do. So it just depends. Of course, what gets in the way, um, and this isn't in any particular order, but self-righteousness, do, do you have, you know, you know self-righteousness, you know, and uh, as Marsha Linehan says, you know, the trouble with self-righteousness is that it feels so good, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think she's right. I mean, I'm sort of embarrassed to admit it, but I think it's true. Doesn't it feel kind of good to be self-righteous, you know? I told you it's true. Yeah, I told you it's true. Yeah, you did. Yeah, see, exactly. And, um, and of course, at the heart of self-righteousness is judgment, is this idea that, that I'm right and you're wrong, instead of this isn't a right or wrong question. Okay, It's not we're both right. It's there's no such thing as right, at least about our experience. Okay, Of course, there's right and wrong when it comes to physics. right? If I let go of the battery, it falls. It always falls. right? We have gravity. Okay, So it's not that this is a postmodern like, therapy where there's all, it's all a matter of perception. No, there's physics. right? It always goes down. Okay. When you come to quantum mechanics, hmm? when you come to quantum mechanics, yeah. Yeah. not any, any logic. Well, quantum mechanics is tricky. It's probably more dialectical, but I, uh, that's too complicated to bring in here. I, I agree with you. But it turns out to be dialectical, right? Like it could be left, it could be right, it could be both. Right, exactly. So 
but, but self-righteousness is, is relatively easy for the therapist to know what to do. Hard to do, but easy to know what the target is. It's to help the person let go of judgments. And often what's behind the self-righteousness is the primary emotion is really big and the person is trying to escape it. So if I stop being committed to I'm right, damn it, what happens is if, then there's almost always an enormous flood of sadness there when the person lets go of the judgment. Sometimes fear. So fear and sadness are huge in this. And so we have to learn as therapists working with these kinds of families, if you've got one suicidal person in the family, you've got a lot of fear and sadness in everybody. And being able to tolerate that is not easy. But if you can help people tolerate the fear and sadness and express it accurately, that often helps the self-righteousness go away. Okay. Now, that's, now, of course, sometimes other members of the family besides the suicidal one are highly reactive and have a lot of emotionality. Okay. And that just means that you know, you've got more than one person who has to learn to manage emotion. And then, of course, sometimes people don't accept reality. You know, that's the shoulds. You know, well, you, should, you know how to ski. You shouldn't be falling down. Well, except that I am. That's the reality. You don't like it, but it is reality. You can't say I shouldn't do it if I do do it. If I do do it, I should do it. Right? By, just by definition, right? That's really hard. And I think if you, at least in English, you can have a lot of fun with that. You know? Um, so if I get in the car in the morning, right? In the car, and it's winter, and I go to start my car, and the car won't start. Well, the car should start, damn it, right? <laughs> It should, right? Psychotic. You're all psychotic. No. Why should a car with a dead battery start? That's crazy. You have a dead battery. I tell you, I have a dead battery and the car should start? I don't think so. But the battery shouldn't be dead. I just replaced it a month ago. Well, that's true, right? It shouldn't be dead if you just replaced it a month ago. But it is. And Within physics, there's a reason for it. Maybe I left the lights on. Maybe it, it's a defective battery. Maybe the generator in the car isn't working and isn't recharging the battery. Why should a battery that doesn't get recharged be recharged? That's psychotic. You see, you see what I'm getting at? So you can play with this. And I love the examples of like dead batteries in cars because everybody can relate to that. And I've had lots of moms and dads get really frustrated with me about this, but then get it, like, right. So she shouldn't want to kill herself as the same as the car should start when the battery's dead. Or we don't know why it shouldn't start, but if it isn't starting, it shouldn't start. Well, we have to figure out why. Exactly, that's the curiosity. And now we're getting somewhere. The mechanic doesn't say, well, it should start if you replace the battery. But why are you bringing it to me? It should start. Try it again. The mechanic says, huh, that's interesting. I wonder why if it's a new battery, it's not starting. And the mechanic goes and says, oh, and I'm going to earn some money. And they're going to figure it out. Right? The mechanic is curious. Why can't we be curious? So parents like that. They're going to be mechanics. Okay. And of course, it's also the case that attacks and withdrawal are negatively reinforced, which means that when our arousal goes up, if we are able to push the other person away or we're able to withdraw, that removes us from the conflict situation, and then we feel better. Well, that's a lousy way to feel better through having to either attack or withdraw. And then the last part here is not trivial, that sometimes other people interfere, right? Grandparents, siblings, okay? Somebody says, you know, like, you know, your, your sister says to you, you shouldn't put up with that from your daughter. Ouch, right? So now there's encouragement to be self-righteous and psychotic. Okay, so we routinely bring in, we have, we have this big thing we pull in everybody, you know, extended family, friends, and have a session on how they can support accurate expression and validation in the family, and how they can stop being judgmental and supporting psychotic behavior. Okay. And actually, it's often very helpful. We, it, sometimes it's just two other people. We've had 18 people in around this sometimes. You know, there's extended family, and we just tell them, basically, cut it out. You know, and sometimes it works. <laughs> all right. So, of course, the solutions which we've talked about all have to do with mindfulness, emotion regulation, relationship mindfulness. Okay. That's, those are the big three that get us to either accurate expression or validation. Now, the therapist can do, you saw, can also do it, I can block. 
by we can block the destructive attacks, we can block the withdrawal. That's part of the revolving door, if we can do that, all in the service of uh, reducing anger. Okay, we talked about this, getting rid of judgments gets rid of anger. Uh, we did that. So our goal here, just to make it full, description, that's mindfulness, awareness, that's mindfulness, lower emotional arousal, that's emotion regulation, leads to accurate expression, description, that's mindfulness, awareness, that's mindfulness, awareness of the other person, that's relationship mindfulness. <laughs> Emotion regulation leads to validating responses, okay? And so they're the same thing. And the good news is in a relationship with this two-step, we take turns, right? As couples, anyway, we take turns. You express accurately, I validate. But then sometime later, I express out accurately and you validate. And sometimes, even though it's not the point, sometimes kids even validate parents, okay? Often at lower levels, like I know, right? Like I know, you told me. I mean, that's validating, okay. That's, it's not like, gee, Dad, I completely understand why you're upset with me. I mean, that's like, don't hold your breath. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we're trying to resolve this polarization. That's another level, another way to think about it as a therapist. Um, and that means that when we see a polarity, you know, like the parent is, is treating the person like a terrorist, like this person's going to destroy the family in extreme ways and blow everything up, okay? We can look for fragility, okay? We can see if that's gonna like manifest itself as fragility on the other end of the continuum. Most polarization in families comes from this, the, the 12 o'clock, six o'clock axis. You know, that's what you need. What you need is destroying our relationship. Well, surely we can find some way to do something that's good for you, that's also good for our relationship. And that's, that's the primary synthesis that we do. Okay, so last slide. Well, actually, almost the last slide. Um, kind of went through this. We actually teach people some very basic ways to validate. Um, by the time we actually get the validation, it's easy because they've already been working on mindfulness, relation, mindfulness, emotion regulation. But paying attention is relationship mindfulness. That's validating. Acknowledging the other's experience, like I know, I can tell. You know, and that's the only way I know for most people without enormous amounts of patience. The only way I know when somebody attacks you, you can validate by saying, wow, you're really upset with me. That's true. I'm not, you say I'm a big jerk, I can say, wow, you're really upset with me. That's, that buys us some time, right? It gets you know I'm listening and it actually it's hard to keep attacking me. A little harder. And then I can say, the next one, what happened? Okay, working to understand, asking questions. Understanding problems in context means this person might be doing one thing that's really driving me crazy, but don't forget there are other things. Okay, it's not just that. And then the normalizing, the of course, the of course. Like, of course, where's the of course? So in our mother-daughter dyad, she says, you know, uh, when, when mom says it's easy, I get demoralized. Of course, right? That's the of course part. When something's hard to do, when somebody says it shouldn't be hard, that's demoralizing. Of course, that's normal. So we try hard to find the normal parts of this. And then sometimes we can match vulnerability. This is, I call this the date strategy, right? If you go out on a first date with somebody, okay? Think back, think back, okay? <laughs> Go out on a first date. So I, I go out on a first date and my, and my date says to me at the end of the night, gee, you know, I had a really nice time. I hope we can do this again. Okay, well that sounds good, right? So I can validate, I can start with the first one. I can, mm -hmm. I don't know how satisfying that is, okay? Yeah, it seemed like you're having a good time. <laughs> now, what did I do that you really enjoyed? Um, of course you had a good time. You were with me, right? <laughs> None of those are going to work. It's really the, the matching, the vulnerability. That it's like it has to be what? Me too, right? There's a me too. So we, we tease families, but it's not entirely teasing, that basically there are very few two-word responses they can learn, right? They can learn, I know, right? Of course, me too. What happened? 
okay? Four two-word things that can get you out of any jam, okay? And I would say that's almost true. You have to still mean it. It still has to be true, okay? But if you can't, some, you know, don't you have sometimes families where one person is not as verbal as another? You know, and I, I get this. I have a lot. I mean, it's it's not entirely gender based, but we certainly get. I mean, I get dads who don't know what to say to their their teenagers. You know, sometimes and moms sometimes. And I just say, you know, look, if you can come up with, I know what happened, of course, and me too, and just use them at the right moment. You know, you can go. You don't have to like talk in complete sentences. It actually, well, they are complete sentences, but they're two word sentences. It's very reassuring. Of course. Me? Thank you. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, she and she uses it on me. Believe me, she does. Yes. So, all right. So, the summary. You already heard this. Validate the valid often. Occasionally, we can invalidate invalid things, but only after validating valid things first. Okay. No invalidation of valid things, no validation of invalid things. Okay, can you say that really fast? Any language, right? Validate the valid. Don't invalidate the valid. Don't validate the invalid. Occasionally invalidate the invalid, but only after validating the valid many times. Okay? If you can, that's, that's the whole thing. Right? So, and uh, there's always something valid, of course. Okay, so. I, I got three extra minutes out of you. Thank you for your patience with me. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I think we're out of time, right? Right. Okay. Well, thank you. 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 I'm speaking on behalf of the organizers of this uh, conference that is starting uh, tomorrow. And uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you know that there is a conference that is starting uh, tomorrow, Friday and Sunday, which is called What is Working with the BPD, with the <coughs> Borderline Personality. And Professor Fuzetti is one of the uh, key uh, speakers, one of the key uh, tenors of this uh, opera, along with the uh, uh, presenters from uh, other models. There'll be uh, Professor Fonagy that will uh, present the um, MBT, the mentalization based therapy uh, model, and uh, Professor uh, Frank Yeomans to present uh, the uh, transfer uh, focused uh, therapy. But uh, you, Ellen, uh, so generously uh, came earlier today to teach us the whole day. Some of you were with us the whole day. Some of you joined us in the afternoon. But uh, you are uh, teaching us uh, from the morning. I'm so delighted to uh, pay uh, the gratitude, I think, of in the name of all of us, truly from, uh, by myself, for this uh, generous uh, teaching and enriching uh, some of you who would like to, to see more of uh, Professor Frosetti can go on the internet to uh, the site of the NEA BPD, NEA BPD, uh, and to uh, the alliance, the National Education Alliance of BPD in the United States, because there are many uh, videos there, some of them of uh, Alan's uh, 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 speaking uh, lectures. Also, you can send a mail to Magid, uh, and not uh, Rosenbaum here, the director of the program of psychotherapy, would love to get uh, emails from you asking more information, more data, more uh, stuff uh, specifically from you if you will uh, be in contact and so she can disseminate the knowledge back to you guys. Um, this gentleman over here was asking if your wife is doing the same. I have to say that you cannot escape thinking about your spouse, your children, as a, as a parent, as a, a yeah, right? It's, a, it's, it's an everyday it's thing. It's not just, you know, if I wasn't with MBT, I think you would have converted me today to uh, DBT. So, but I'm, I feel quite okay with it now because we are neighbors and good neighbors. I think that you were speaking the same language uh, to, to, to a large degree. But you were so convincing uh, and, and compelling. I think it was wonderful. So thank you again. And see you tomorrow.
אני רוצה להגיד בעברית שאם מישהו רוצה לשמוע עוד ולהגיע לכנס, יש הרשמה במקום מחר, ככה אני שומע נכון, אז הוא יכול להגיע לכנס שמתחיל מחר בשמונה ורבע בהרשמה, יש ארוחת בוקר נפלאה ולהירשם במקום. תודה להתראות. Yeah.